invented 30 years ago by IBM scientists, atomic force microscopy gave rise to a whole family of related instruments and techniques that have revolutionized our ability to view, explore, and manipulate surfaces and materials that were not previously observable. A new paper appearing today demonstrates the tool's latest achievement by helping scientists observe an intriguing molecular rearrangement reaction first described in 1972. The Berman reaction, the transformation we just observed here in a single molecule, is a fascinating molecular rearrangement which was discovered in 1972. First it was considered simply as a curiosity, but in the late 80s it was found that the mechanism of action of some anti-cancer drugs is based on this reaction. Of course, this finding attracts a lot of attention from the scientific community, and now it's a very popular reaction in organic chemistry. In this study, we demonstrate a reversible Bergman cyclization reaction in a single molecule. Starting from the bromoanthracene, we created a radical and diradical intermediate by sequentially splitting off the two bromine atoms from this molecule by applying a voltage pulse to the scanning probe tip. By yet another voltage pulse to the diradical, it undergoes a so-called retro-Bergman cyclization where a bond between two six-membered rings gets cleaved. When such a bond is broken, the two six-membered rings open to a ten-membered ring. This can happen on either side of the molecule. It is also possible to convert the ten-membered ring back to two six-membered rings. Such is then called Bergman cyclization. This reaction represents a switch between a tricyclic and decyclic system. In our experiment, the molecule is adsorbed on a two-atomic layer thick sodium chloride film. This insulating support in a cryogenic environment is essential to stabilize highly reactive intermediates. To trigger their reaction, we position the scanning probe tip above the molecule. At low bias voltage, the molecule retains its structure. From a certain threshold voltage on, however, the tunneling electrons carry enough energy to induce the Bergman reaction. With the STM, we monitor in real time as the molecule is switched between three possible structures and link each current plateau to the corresponding structure by taking an AFM image with a carbon monoxide functionalized tip. The experimental image on the top left resembles the atomic structure of the molecule and agrees very well with the simulated AFM image, confirming the formation of diene with a 10 membered ring on the right side. Remarkably, switching between the diradical and diene structure does not only change the molecule's reactivity, but also its optical and magnetic properties by switching between the spin singlet and triplet state. This makes it a promising building block for future molecular-based logic. In 2009, we found out how to image molecules with atomic resolution. We used AFM, or atomic force microscopy, which was invented here at IBM 30 years ago. And in addition, uh, we functionalized the end of our tip by atomic manipulation. And here we attached a single carbon monoxide molecule. The following years, we spent refining and pushing the limits of our technique. And we demonstrated the measurement of the electric field above a single atom and a single molecule. We demonstrated bond order discrimination and the measurement of exact absorption geometries using AFM. This opened several new routes of research and applications. On the one hand, we are investigating unknown molecules and help to identify their structure. For example, we helped in the identification of metabolites extracted from deep sea organisms. On the other hand, and this is what we are pursuing in the current work, we want to characterize on surface reactions. Here the idea is to use the tip of a microscope not only for imaging, but also for triggering chemical reactions. Working at low temperatures and on special inert surfaces, here we used um, two atom thick sodium chloride films, we are able to stabilize reactive intermediates that are otherwise too short lived to be investigated in detail. The next steps would be to synthesize novel molecules and molecular networks that cannot be synthesized by any other means. We are also after new applications for such molecules. In particular, here we think of using individual molecules as logic devices based on single electron transfer. So we are located here in our scanning probe labs, actually in the very same room where already 
Binning and Rohrer did some of their first experiments about 30 years ago. Well, to perform measurements on single molecules, we need to work in a very controlled environment, namely in ultra-high vacuum and at low temperatures. So the setup essentially consists out of a preparation vacuum chamber, where we prepare our metal substrate and crude sodium chloride film, a chamber housing the microscope, and a cryostate filled with liquid helium to cool the sample down to minus 217 degrees Celsius, as well as the electronics, which we need to scan and control the scanners, and also to record the measurement signals. So as a sensor, we are using such kind of a Q-plus sensor, which was developed by Franz Giesebo. A Q-plus sensor is essentially a modified design based on a quartz crystal tuning fork that you typically find as a timekeeping element in uh, wristwatches. Now with this sensor, we are able to oscillate the cantilever with amplitudes down to a hundredth of a nanometer, and at the same time, we collect the tunneling current. So in this way, we can combine STM and AFM capabilities in one device with unimpaired performance. The calculations showed on surface that the energy of the one structure is significantly lowered, so that both structures have the same energy. The same energy of the both structures and a significant energy barrier between the structures makes it possible to switch the structures individually. This work suggests the great potential of this technique to discover new unexpected reactions. In conventional solution chemistry, after so many decades of rigorous research, the chances to find new important reactions are quite limited. Compared to this, single molecule chemistry by team manipulation is just starting, so I would expect extremely exciting discoveries in the near future.